phone is to me at night. His name is Fred. He keeps trying to take me to the boiler room. He wants to kill me. What is a dream? It is a portal between our inner and our outer world. Information that comes to us while we are sleeping from another dimension, another reality. What is a dream? Nobody really knows. You know, dreams are pretty uh, amazing places, and it is possible to use them a bit, because I think that's what the mind is doing. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Throughout history, Mankind has been fascinated by dreams and has strived to understand them and their role in our waking lives. Dreams are considered important in virtually every culture in the world and throughout history. Some cultures would say this is the way that God speaks to us. Other people would say that there are other friendly spirits who are helping us with those dreams. There is a universal awe of dreaming and a universal fear of dreaming. There's not a civilization in the world that hasn't developed a folklore deriving from dreams. This is new. These are ancient dream demons. Supposedly they roam the dreams of the living. Then they give them the power to cross the line and turn our nightmares into reality. We have actually records on clay tablets from the Assyrians in Mesopotamia. So our interest in dreams go back to oh, what was the dawn of humankind. Many ancient civilizations believed that dreams held special powers and organized their societies around them. The Egyptians looked at dreams as prophetic. There were special dream interpreters and they had prominence, especially the king of Pharaoh or someone of royalty would dream a dream. It was very, very important. The Greeks had an incredible dreaming culture for over a thousand years. There were dream temples, about 400 of them. This was specifically for healing. If you had a physical problem, uh, disease, you would go to a temple where you would spend the night sleeping. And in this temple, there would be snakes all around you, crawling over you until you had a dream which gave you the information that you needed to have around the illness that you were dealing with. The earlier cultures really looked at the different ways of approaching the dream itself. Very often, um, people were looking for um, disclosure of the future. We find evidence of that in the Bible, Old Testament, dream of Joseph, a dream of Jacob, Jacob's ladder, also contact, let's say, with the divinities, with the gods and with the goddesses. Native American cultures, dreams being very, very important. This is the great spirit. This is Wonkantanka talking to you. And so you pay great attention to them. The Chinese, for example, believe that the spirit actually leaves the body during dream time. They feel that uh, the dream is an entry point into uh, deeper worlds. And that's, uh, that sort of approach is quite frequent in the, in the East, in other religions. That's pretty. What is that? This is my Malaysian dream doll. It's supposed to bring good dreams. The Balinese were the culture that I discovered that was most interesting in because they have a system of kind of teaching their kids lucid dreaming to be aware that they were dreaming while they were dreaming. It's a whole different way of looking at it. And then basically it's saying, this is part of my mind, this is, can be used by me. The important point here that every culture in the world pays attention to dreams and realizes that they have some importance. People have always tried to make sense out of dreams, this behavior, and that I'm sure will continue, whether or not there's sense to be made of it. And I think that's the real issue. What the hell are dreams anyway? Mistress, the truth is, we still don't know what they are or where they come from. Do dreams serve some essential purpose for the human mind? Or are they simply a byproduct of normal brain activity? Science has not yet provided an answer. There are many theories about why we have to dream. 
and none is really conclusive. It may be that what you see is what you get, that dreams are just something that sort of spins off brain processes that are going on that have no real significance, and there may not be much more than that. It's still quite unclear whether there are some vital physiological processes that go on in sleep that don't happen at other times. I don't see why you couldn't just give me a pill to keep me from dreaming. Everyone's got to dream, young lady. If you don't dream, you go. In 1900, Freud wrote a very influential book called The Interpretation of Dreams where Freud indicated that dreams are important in understanding a person's neuroses, psychoses, their mental state of health, and showed how to work with dreams. That really re-established, you might say, the importance of the dream in many ways in the culture and established it within the psychological discipline. The researches of Carl Jung was the next significant milestone Jung's idea was that they were kind of ancient symbols and sort of thought structures and that we were all connected in some ways to each other at the base level of thought and feeling and dreams. All day long I've been hearing those fingernails. Fingernails? That made me remember the dream I had last night. What'd you dream? I dreamed about a guy in a dirty red and green sweater. Scream. Nancy, you dreamed about the same creep I did. Jung said, oh, dreams are telling us much more about what's going on. It's just not about us. It's about many things. And it's just not tapping into our lives uh, now on an ego level. It's tapping into a much larger place, the place where Freddy Krueger lives. Nightmares are the darker mysteries of the dream world. Do they come from a different place? Do they carry a more sinister message? Out of all the chaos and the input that we deal with on a daily basis and we take in, our dreams need to process it and put it into a kind of a shape. Some of those shapes are nightmares.